In this video, you're gonna learn how to make magic shields, just like in Doctor Strange. Now for this effect, you're gonna need a shield. You could try to make it in Fusion, but why go through all that trouble when you can just download a pre-made asset? The ones I use came from ProductionCrate.com. They have a lot of really cool magic assets that are ready to drop right into your video. I decided to use one of their graphics because it gives more control. I use the Magic Circle Styla One. All right, here in Fusion, I've got this very real footage of me in the mountains doing my best Doctor Strange impression. Uh, you can just ignore that thing in the media pool right there. So for this effect, we're gonna need to track my hands. So I'm gonna add a brightness contrast and play with the contrast and the lift a little bit, just to make sure my hands are really contrasty. That'll help get a really good track. Go to the final frame, add a tracker. I'm gonna go ahead and hit F2 and rename this left track. Bring that over to my hand, somewhere where there's a good amount of contrast. Now under the adaptive mode, I'm gonna set it to best match, bring down the tolerance a little bit, then track backwards. All right, that finished tracking. You can see how it did. It actually tracked it really well. We only really need to track up until where I start moving my hands. None of this matters, really. So I'm gonna take that off, then add another tracker. This one I'm going to name Right Track. Then just go through the same process with the other hand. I'm gonna drag my tracks over here, and I can delete this brightness contrast node. Now let's add our shield asset in. I'm gonna drag it in here, bring that to the viewer. I downloaded this in 4K, which is more resolution than we need. So I'm just gonna add a resize node. That automatically puts it in 1920 by 1080, but it stretches it out. We can just hit keep frame aspect. Now it's at a much more manageable resolution. I'm gonna add a fast noise over here and drag this into the mask of that. In the movies, the shield is never completely solid, so there's a bit of randomness in how bright different parts are, which the fast noise replicates. You can bring the scale up. Then to give it some motion, we can add an expression on the angle and just put time. That will put the value at whatever the time is. See, I'm at frame 96, and it puts it at 96. Also bring the C's right up a little bit. All right, now we can go ahead and merge it over to see what we're doing. Let's add a transform node. Go ahead and rename this to track. Then under the center, I'm gonna right click, connect to, left track tracker one path, position. So now it's stuck to the hand. But because we track this little corner right here, we need to get it up here. But we can't play around with the settings because that'll mess up our tracking keyframes. So let's add another transform before it. This one will bring up to where we need it to go. We can also bring the size something that looks better. Now we have the shield tracked to our hand. So I'm gonna go to find the frame where my hands stop moving, set a keyframe on the size, then go to where they start moving and bring the size all the way down. Now it animates on. Now you notice the shield is facing right at us, but our hand is tilted slightly downward. So to make it look more 3D, we can add a DVE node. Bring the pivot up, this little green X here so that it's in the circle in the middle of our thing. Then I'm just gonna set keyframes on the X, Y, and Z rotation, and then play around with them till I get it matching my hand pretty well. Now I'm just gonna go every 10, 20 frames just to see that it roughly stays connected. You don't have to do this frame by frame, just make sure it generally follows your hands. Now that I've got that keyframed, I can actually find the keyframe where it's scaled down all the way. And then I just like to bring the Z rotation a couple of times so that it spins on as it grows. Now it looks very artificial right now, so one thing we can do to make it look better is go into all of these and check motion blur. Also bring up the quality a little bit. Somewhere between 7 and 10 usually looks good. Now it looks a lot better, much more realistic. So now I'm going to bring these up a little bit. Let's make it look like that fiery shield we all know. So I'm gonna add a glow. I'm gonna use the X-Glow Fuse, but you can use whatever glow you like best. Bring it to a nice fiery orange look. And bring up the glow saturation. I'm gonna bring down the gain to about 0.5. Now to tweak these settings, I'm gonna add a Tintensity node. Most of the things I do in here you can do with a color corrector node, but I like the controls the Tintensity gives. Play with the saturation, the gain, and the gamma. Now at this point you wanna go into the Merge node, 
change the apply mode to screen. That'll make things look a lot nicer. Now compared to my footage, my shield is way sharp. So I'm gonna go and add a blur node. The default settings look good for me. In the movies, whenever this thing turns on, there's a whole ton of sparks. So I grabbed this spark asset from Production Crate, which has a lot of really nice spark assets. I'm gonna find the frame right as I finish swinging. Now clicking on my sparks, under the keyframes tab, I can drag this so it'll actually start on that frame. I'm gonna merge that over, set to screen, and drag it over where my shield is. I'm just gonna add another blur to this to make sure it matches. Now to get the other one, you wanna go through all these steps on the other hand. But if you really wanna bring your Doctor Strange videos to the next level, then you're gonna need a portal. So in this video, I show you how to make the Sling Ring portal inside of DaVinci Resolve. 